Hi, it's Kane Hodder, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're watching Slash and Cast. Keep watching, or I'll kill you and your whole family. What's going on, horror fans? Welcome back to another episode of Slash and Cast. My name is Riley. That is Nick. First of all, happy holidays. We decorated. There's a few Easter eggs in here. You find them, put them in the comments. I'll high fives. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good enough. Yeah. Check out our streams, guys. You know, we got a few coming this week, and then starting next week is when things get uh, real crazy. And that schedule will be officially posted onto our Discord and to a, probably on Twitter at some point, just how it's going to be laid out. A lot of streams coming, though, so prepare yourself for this winter break. The next month's going to be pretty intense, and that will continue over the summer as well. College, you know, it's a tough life. Tough life. All right, hey, Star Wars comes out this week. Side note, Star Wars about this week, December 15th, and uh, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm saying. Okay, but we're not, since you know, we're a horror, you know, dedicated channel, we're not going to have a review here, but SlashCast.com will have an exclusive review of Star Wars The Last Jedi, so it's not, it's still getting worked on, okay, that website's still going through, yeah. uh, we're still bringing in writers and whatnot to write articles, but if all horror news will be there, also exclusive stuff for that we're going to put on iTunes and whatnot, we'll be right there as well. And yeah, the occasional... You know, Star Wars, the okay, whatever we're you know we're really interested in that doesn't quite fit the channel, um, we could throw in there as well. Exactly, and uh, access to the merch store, the brand new merch store, which where you can get mugs and beanies, like you can see on little part eight right here, Frankenstein, Jason. Uh, all that's available on the website as well. There's a big picture on the main site. Also, all that information to our RSS feed through the articles can be found on Discord. Yep. Um, make sure you check out our Discord server. It's officially partnered. Um, it's a great place to catch all of our content, including when we go live, every new video we post, whether it be the podcast or gaming. Uh, it's also home to our movie nights, um, you know, exclusive to our Discord. Um, little drive-in type elements in a pre-show and uh, really old school intermissions. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, they're back. Yeah, we had a really fun one actually the other day. Yeah. Um, a lot of people missed out on because they came back so suddenly. I think everyone was caught off guard. Yes. Um, we, but we watched like Get Out, The Others, Devil, and It Follows. Right. So it was a lot of fun. We keep it to a theme. Yeah. Try would, to. <laughs> that theme was Think McFly. It was think McFly. Horror films that make you think. That's what it was. It, good theme. Yeah, you know, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good time. Okay, yeah. Like I said, join the Discord. All right, let's go into one thing everyone's waiting for. It's been roughly a month, but we have come to an end. I think there were a lot of entries. It was over 12,000. Yes. Uh, it was crazy. A lot of new people come to the channel because of that, and it was pretty cool. But the PS4 giveaway, it's time for the announcement. Don't hit the table. <laughs> it's going to break the microphone. Everything's going to fall. <laughs> Everything's going to fall. We know how we worked on this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we went through. It took us a long time to get through all of them. It was, like, I think over 750 pages of validation we had to go through. <laughs> Because we validate everything. Because I hate, I don't want somebody to win that didn't actually do what they're supposed to do. So we actually go through a validation process. Yes. Which usually we make someone else do. Yes. But they weren't around. Uh, okay. Let's cut to the chase. The winner. From Germany. So you already cost me a lot in shipping. The winner. I'm going to butcher your name. It's, it's going to be way off. Okay. Prepare yourself. The winner from Germany. Caleb Feller. Feller. Yes. I'm so sorry. Every time we do these, it's someone's name that I can't pronounce. Right. Um, you know, we will contact you via the email you provided in Gleam. Um, otherwise, we'll we'll try to reach out to you if you don't respond on one of those other um, uh, platforms that you uh, entered with. Yeah. So we'll reach out across those. Uh, give, we only wait 72 hours. So 72 hours, if there's no response at all by that point, there's somewhat of claiming it, we'll redraw. So technically, it's not over yet. Uh, but at this point, Caleb... You are the winner. Yes. So please check your email if you're listening, because I nothing will be worse than missing out on that. And if we redraw, um, we'll announce it on Twitter first, and then on next week's episode of Slash Gas as well, if he doesn't claim his prize. Yes, but uh, let's hope that it doesn't go to that, you know. All right, let's get into the news. Friday the 13th, the game, balancing. Balancing, balancing, balancing. Now, we already talked about that. We had a video dedicated to this. Um, and if you haven't seen the video, please do. It, it really breaks it down uh, very distinctly what that quote is. But uh, basically what's happening is they're simply adding pocket knives and med spray spawn locations at campsites among the tents. 
Uh, nothing really crazy there. But that good idea. Yeah, it's not. It's not. They said it's going to be stuff like that, like pocket knives, and med sprays, stuff that you can obtain, not like parts for vehicles. Right. And um, you know, you're thinking, oh, more pocket knives. They're slightly reducing the spawn rate of pocket knives slightly. Ugh. There's only. Uh, it's supposed to be only five spawn at a time, not including Tommy's. So that, th- that would be th- one of them. What's nice is it, it expands the range. There's more places to search. Yes. And it, it while it people, it's not really nerfing counselors by any means. It's just. It's just making it do a little more work to get to there. It's nothing crazy. It's just it, more empty drawers is the only real downside. Yeah, basically. Can you find Pamela tapes at campsites? That would be interesting. Doubtful. Doubt it too, but I'm just saying it would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, now, the another is your so-called nerf. It's not a nerf to counselors. The, it, I, personally, I thought it was a bug. I'm surprised it was actually something they intentionally did. Yeah. Um, the medic perk uh, no longer carries over to two uses when they drop it. So if you had the perk and you had a med spray... And you dropped your med spray. If someone else that didn't have the perk would pick it up, they'd still be able to use it twice. Yes. Uh, now that's being removed. I thought that was a bug, but apparently it was actually something that was implemented into the game. I don't see how that was a good idea. You, I mean, you're you're a medic, I guess. You're a do- you're a miracle worker. I, you're, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, now also the few spawns farther away from the phone box. Now this is something they've been addressing for a while, and it's they've been trying to work on it, like I said, for a while. Um, but now officially the fuse will not spawn inside of the phone house at all. Zero percent chance. Yeah, zero percent chance to be in that phone house at all. But it can probably you know still be in the one next to it or close around. But the, their goal is just to get it spread out in general. Right. So the gameplay actually is more effective for a longer period of time. <laughs> Um, and there's, you know, more time for Jason to actually get around a little Especially bit. Especially on those small maps. It's The phone is called, and the the cops are called in the first four minutes yeah. of the game. Yeah. Even when you trap it. Because then the pocket knives you find. <laughs> and also, uh, usually it used to be back, a lot of people don't remember this, a lot of new players don't remember this, but uh, it used to be when the fuse was put in, whether you messed it up or not, once it was in and repaired, it would make a noise regardless if it was messed up. And then, so Jason would know. Now, there's no noise at all. If you don't mess it up, you're good. Police are called. Um, so have a pocket knife, get the trap out, you know. Also, I wish there was more of a, a distinction uh, on Jason's map uh, when your traps are diffused, uh, separated from active, separated I, from getting stepped in. Yeah, it is. Um, this is something a lot of people don't even realize that the traps do change when they, people get yes. stepped in because it's really hard to tell. It's very small. Uh, so maybe like a different color. They yeah. turn like white or they, they're white and they turn red when they're, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, you know, active would make sense that it's white, um, you know, maybe a, a, a lighter color. And then when they're deactivated, maybe they should be, you know, a different color than whether they were um, stepped, stepped in. in. Mm-hmm. May, you know, maybe that's something they could implement. Maybe it's too hard. Um, I, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe they can't tell the distinction, but maybe just the active and the non-active uh, changed color. Yeah. I always thought that would be the case. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Yeah. Uh, now, another one that's coming in towards the change of balancing is the re- the reduction of the effectiveness of the perk heavy hitter. Uh, now, relax. Okay, I know some people are like, oh, stop nerfing the counters. Relax. First of all, heavy hitter only ch- increases the stun time of Jason. So yes. it's really all... N- it's not that big of a deal. Yes, the stun time will even be less for weaker counselors. So it's, you know, you want to, especially for people like LaChapa, that's what I think of because he's weak and he also has bad stamina. So you kind of need stun time to, to get going. I, I'll make it work. I mean, <laughs> but really, uh, Heavy Hitter wasn't all that effective since the uh, pa- two patches ago. It uh, wasn't nearly as effective as it used mm-hmm. to be. Uh, so really, it's, it's really not all that big of a deal. Um, now, I do need to, I have a rant, okay? Now, you people that have, that have heard me say this many times, uh, feel free to just, you know, go to the bathroom, go get yourself a drink, uh, or just, you know, skip ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll try to put a timestamp if we remember. Yeah, I, I, timestamps will be the top comment, the pin comment. I, I'm all over that stuff now. Um, listen, I'm going to speak really slow and try to make this clear as day. Because no matter how many times we say it, <laughs> people always just seem confused in the comment section. Okay. Um, first of all, there's, I don't even know where to start with this. There, there's been people going around, there's always comments that say like, uh, you just need to get better as Jason, yada, yada, Jason's fine, you just need to get better, it takes skill to play him. Uh, okay, there, you're totally right, it does take skill to play Jason, uh, and it should still take skill. I'm not saying that, but that's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, there's also people blaming, blaming us specifically uh, for counselors getting nerfed, which they, the counselors themselves haven't been nerfed. Just things surrounding counselors right. have been 
nerfed it. No, I've seen I've seen across you know, even other YouTubers' videos saying blaming us yeah. for for this. Like, uh, what? yeah. First of all, uh, I don't know if you realize this, but we only have thirty thousand subs. We're not exactly a big channel with a lot of power. Uh, and even if we <laughs> even if we did have that power, you're welcome because. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, like the balancing, it, it does need to be addressed. And for the umpteenth fucking time, I'm not addressing this as a player playing Jason. Because that's what I always hear. Well, you guys just got mad because you played part seven, Jason. Yeah, and you guys just suck at Jason, huh? LOL. Uh, yeah, you just did bad one time as part seven, Jason. Now you think everything needs to be changed. First of all, watch our live streams. You, that's what the, this, the, some people are referring to our live streams. I, the people, I can't reiterate this enough. Live streams, while it is us, right? It's our personality. It's us, okay? It's not an act, but we do ump the rage up to like an 11. We ump that excitement up because that you need to keep people engaged. So when we're when I'm Jason and getting mad, I'm I'm I'm, I'm exaggerating it. But what what we're saying is, as we say that you know Jason is weak. I mean, we 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 can openly say that. Um, it's. Not from us playing Jason that we have come up with that. Dis- I mean, fact. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm trying to get. We at. are playing as counselors, and we can kill Jason twelve times mm-hmm. in four hours. Yeah, do the math there and realize how often that is. Part that's like eights, one, so, level one hundred one. Level one hundred ones. Part eights doesn't matter. <laughs> we are we are whooping Jason's ass. Yeah. Every game we could. I mean, how many times do you do it today? Three. Three times no, today, with and just, strangers just casually with the, yeah. with strangers. Yeah. You know that so one we're can not. One can you speak English, by the way? Right. You know, <laughs> actually, when we play as Jason, we don't die. We yeah, don't it, it's really not that. Like my issue doesn't come. Yeah, there's some points where I, I get upset with playing Jason, but that's not my. That's not my point. But I barely play Jason, and to to try the, there's. I'm not saying names. So I don't want to call anybody out specifically, but there's there's stuff that's like, oh, you specifically hate everything about it just because you messed up as Part Seven Jason. No, you, I I intentionally play Part Seven Jason on streams to get upset. It's very fucking intentional. I'm upset. I'm upset. It's very intentional, dude. Um, so my problem is I am bored as hell as a counselor beating the shit out of Jason. And like, when's the, this is what I was asking you last stream. When's the last time you were scared? For real, think about it. Legitimately. Where have you felt suspense? Where have you felt fear? The only time I have really been scared playing this game is when stock is used effectively. Exactly. Which, even, is, which rare. is rare. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, we've we've been killing Jason. We go into a stream and say, you know what? We're not going to kill Jason today. We, I feel like that's getting old. Jason is bullying us in the car. So what do we do? Beat the shit out of him. <laughs> what do we do? Get the mask off? He's still beating the car? All right. That's another, thing, that's another thing I want to address <laughs> in, in, in this, uh, this so-called rant. Um, people are saying like, oh, well, it's very rare people to group up on me to try to kill Jason. It's very rare people to actually plan, plan to kill Jason. You're right. You're, you're right. It is it is rare for people to actually have that agenda going into a game. The thing is, how many times do you go into the car and you're getting your ass whooped? The next thing you know, they're gone. Especially if people are saying, well, stop playing bad Jason. Just play part eight. Fuck that. I don't want to play part. Like, I yeah, I play part eight a lot. I want to be part seven. I want to be that Jason. I like his kills. There should be a balance. I mean, even... um. You know, I was playing as part eight and I saw three people running together. I'm like, I can't go for them. There's, I'm getting my mask taken off 100%. There, <laughs> as soon as I stand up, they're going to hit me again. What, what can I do? There's nothing to combat that. So I think this is probably the, how many weeks in a row we've said it. Like there should be a way for Jason to not get bullied when out of a stun. Yeah, dude, I can't reiterate enough. It has nothing to do with me as Jason. Yes. Like, I can get six out of eights at least um, every time. Like, I don't have a really an issue with it. it. It's not that. But me, I've logged, between all consoles, at least 800 hours. Yeah. Between all consoles. And that that is ridiculous amount of time. I should have the skill to do that. Yes, I should. But that doesn't mean when you pick up a game as a level zero and you're jumping in, it doesn't mean you should be complete trash and get killed every time. You, and Or you're a counselor, and all you do is keep swinging his Bugsy or Vanessa. You're starting counselor. Yeah, the, which... When a level zero can come in and beat the shit out of a 101 Jason, that's a problem to me. See, that that all seems to be addressed, too. There needs to be a, a, a balance. I don't know, like, it sounds like I just contradicted myself, but I really, I'm not trying to. I'm saying if we can meet in the middle somewhere, you know, it, w- it shouldn't be OP to one side or the other. Uh, well... It should be Jason should be J- no, no no I'm not I was saying in level skill yes but. correct yeah Jason should be overpowered when the game first came out Jason was overpowered do you, do you not remember the beta 
Oh. The beta was scary. Yes. Like, the beta was bug-filled and a, and a bit of a mess in terms of stuff like that and servers. But when you were playing as a counselor, it was legitimately terrifying. Dark. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's also, you should lower your gamma. That'll help a little bit. Yes. Um, but, yeah, it was legitimately scary. Jason was feared. Uh, you didn't want to get close to him because you were fucked if you did. Right. Now you can now you can look Jason through the window while he smashes it and just say, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. Yeah, like, go ahead, buddy. Come on in. And you do. Now, I'm I'm not I'm not talking. I don't want to be, like uh, talk bad about the teacher at all because I actually have a lot of respect for him. Uh, Ace books, man. I was playing with him today. Just happened to get into his lobby. It was completely accidental. I have a lot of respect for Ace books. I love his channel. Love what he does. Check him out if you haven't already. Link in the description. Uh, but a very very respected Jason. Oh okay? yes. Seven hundred plus hours in the game. I don't think he's ever died as Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just messing around. Had Bugsy, and I got the mask off, and I asked this person who speaking a very broken English. Got them back. They, I was, I came back as Tommy, and they had. I told them to go get the sweater. And we did together. And you we, were, you were teaching them how to, you know, use this, what, what to do. Yeah, I teach them how to use it, and still pulled it off. Yeah, and even like, uh, he was uh, Savini Jason. He was he grabbed you. Pay to win, right? I he, mean, that's, he grabbed you. So you dropped your axe after you got dropped from the sweater stun. You ran over, grabbed the axe, hit him down, then ran around, <laughs> and killed him as. As Tommy, and dude, like, not only was that a very, very good Jason, and he was good. He kicked our ass the first time we played him. Yeah, um, he was playing a Savini, who's a very everyone pay to win, right? No, he's first of all that's proof right there. But like, it, it's a good Jason. So you can't make the excuse that's not a good Jason anymore, yeah. right? And I could do it with somebody that had no fucking clue what they were doing and yeah. still pull it off. The, I just to me that doesn't seem right. And I also got the mask off of two hits. Yeah, I just to me that doesn't seem right. Right, exactly. Like, like I said, your starting characters, Bugsy and Vanessa, level zero can come and keep Jason occupied on the ground over and over and over the entire game. Yeah. The whole point of this rant that went on for longer than I wanted it to, my the whole point of it is stop getting upset at me and saying I need to be better at Jason because one, it has nothing to do with me playing as Jason. And two, I'm not saying to make, you know, Jason super OP and counselor super shitty. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying let's balance combat mechanics out. Yes. Because all the only thing I really hate there there are three like specific things, um, grabs that are in range that are fair in range. I'm talking like we're belly buttoned up, all right, and you it goes over. Them. Yeah, and it goes over their head. <sighs> Hit mechanics as well for the same reason. Yeah. Swinging over someone's head when they crouch. You know, like you get a a new player that doesn't know what he's doing and is just slashing. I can just crouch yeah, you just right under. in front of him, and he just keeps swinging and swinging and swinging. Doesn't know how to use combat stance. Just keeps swinging over me. Yeah, that that's bad to me. And then just to be able to it, – you honestly could do it with two people, but two or three people and just beat the piss out of Jason. Anybody that struggles to get the mask off now, I don't know how because it's so easy. If you want to go into there and just be like, all right, here I go, that's it. Right. Killing Jason used to be something rare. Yeah. What, it was one in every 75, 75 games as the, de the, developers. the developers. It took the developers one in every 75 games to kill Jason, and we can go in and kill Jason five times in a row, 12 times in four hours. Yeah, like that that one time, dude, it was it was six times in a row, um, but there were 12 across. There was 12 total. Uh, I think six six of them were part eights, and five of them were level one on ones. Yeah, one one was a new player. We'll give them that. Well, yeah, there was there was always a couple of new players. Right. That that's then, when we just really got oh, bored. Like, you know, yeah, you know, we we and then we feel bad. We feel bad about <laughs> bullying Jason as the counselors, and that's when we say, you know, uh, combat mechanics need to be addressed. And um, I believe they did say that they they um they're looking into it, looking into what they can do, but. <laughs> It's rough right now. Like, honestly, the only times I, and I mean this all legit, this is not me fucking being egotistical. I'm so good at, at being a counselor because I'm not. I'm perfectly average as a counselor. It's just making me look good because of how easy it is right now. Um, the only time we fail to kill Jason is either because of a glitch or because of somebody becoming Tommy that shouldn't be. Like, right. we're not one of us. That's seriously it. It, it. Seriously, if I become Tommy Jarvis, we kill Jason. In 90% of the yeah, time. Yeah, it's very rare for it to actually be the skill of Jason stopping us. Right. And it shouldn't be. I feel like he should have a fighting chance, man. And they never they never do. One time. I remember one time. JTO. JTO. Jason Takes Omegle was stalking in the shack. Yeah. And he got my ass. Yeah, that, that was the bastard. last time I, I actually bastard. screamed. I was like, oh, my God. He's here. And then he, he got me. Because I disarmed the trap at the door, yeah. you know, or with a pocket knife. So, you know, like I said, you know, if you have some skill, you 
there's a chance. Yeah. But it's very little. And usually that only happens when you when you know you're going to get, get killed and they're going into the you know cuz JTO knew we were going into the game right. to get him. Um now, don't take this rant as us hating on the game in any way. It's seriously this rant it really wasn't trying I wasn't trying to target the game. I was trying to target people that are saying exactly. that we suck at Jason that has shit to do with that. Exactly. It doesn't. I mean, I'll even if I suck at Jason, I suck at Jason. That has nothing to do with my rant at all. I I, hmm. I don't think I do. I think I'm I'm okay. I'm not <laughs> saying I'm great. I think I'm all right at Jason, but like I don't if I have a problem being Jason, I'm just going to fucking switch over to counselor. Pff, done. <laughs> but but then again, you're uh, the the preferences is yeah, it, that's fucked up too. We need is, to fix that is, too. Uh, is it more Dude, today I was I had my preference on counselor the whole time playing with Ace books, and I was Jason three times. Last stream, uh, or two streams ago, uh, I had my preference set as I always have my preference set as counselor, and I was Jason twice. Green had his on none. Was it zero times? And you had yours on. Uh, mine was on none. On none, and you yeah. were Jason once, and I was Jason more than they were. In different is switching lobbies, stuff like that. So you know, we we still love this. We, I mean, we love this game. We. No, still I'm have, a, I'm we a, still have a lot of fun playing. Yeah, I still have fun. I just feel exactly. bad. <laughs> exactly. We feel bad for the Jason players that we are bullying as counselors. That's the main point we're trying to get across. We're coming at this not from a shitty Jason player as a decent counselor. Yeah, exactly. That's that's seriously, that's that's the main point. Uh now this is this is this is where I'm put the time code. All right, so we're starting right here. Okay. For those that have asked the uh the question a million times, when is the new update coming? There's still no uh there's still no ETA at this time, but Randy did say during his Twitch stream the other day that we should expect some news this week. Yes. He did say that. Expect uh, something special. Exci- this week. Yeah, something exciting, I yeah. believe it was. Yeah. So whether that be a trailer for the the patch, I mean, what's next, um, or the patch itself, um, you know, we should be getting in the next, the patch in the next two weeks. Yeah. Before we- Christmas would be ideal, let's hope. Yeah, before Christmas is definitely the. I don't. I'm not saying it might. It's going to be them. What I'm saying is they're definitely going for that. Yes. Be- before the bum rush of players come in at Christmas that are getting in for Christmas. Right. And you know, even everybody that gets on because of those potential new players, Christmas noobs, Christmas noobs. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's families around. You got to show your family the game. Exactly. You know? <laughs> um. And and yeah, even when you want to get away from your family, you go, you go play video games. That's what I did last year. That's beta. Right. Yeah. During the beta, I came <laughs> over to your house and played the beta. Yeah. Good times. Good, good times. Good times. Uh. So yeah, prepare for it right on then. But it should be this month unless things go something goes wrong. But if you want to know when that drops, you will know. Like, click the notification bell. You know, we'll, we'll post video right away. Um, also, you know, you can go to our Twitter. Yeah. Or the Discord. Or our Discord. <laughs> Discord. Everybody, on our Discord, everybody's posting the link to, to the tweets when they finally announce a patch. Yeah. So, yeah. stay Stay tuned, my friend. Stay tuned. Okay, let's move on to our next topic of the day before <laughs> we go on another uh, rampage. Uh, so, this is another Friday the discussion. This is something we've talked about in our streams and haven't been happy about it. So... There's a new After Team Blu-ray set to release on February 13th of 2018 called Friday the 13th Ultimate Collection Blu-ray Set. Uh, now, this set will feature the first eight films in the franchise. It's also loaded with special features and previous uh, from previous releases. Now, here's a picture of the cover. I, you probably don't like it. Uh, some of you might. I'm not judging. Yeah, okay. I believe I believe every article written about it says it's lackluster. Yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of a mess. But yeah, so it's been talked about a lot. The this this cover. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, I've seen that before. I'm like, God damn it, I've seen that before. Where is I see? Where have I seen that? Because they already fucking made this. This is the DVD cover. Um, it, this is this is a book. This is like the book with all the DVDs in it, which also released the first eight films from Paramount. I. What makes me so upset about it is that this is just lazy. You, I'm pretty sure this was very limited. Not a, people, not a lot of people know about this because this came with like the little hockey mask and stuff. Um, but a lot of people complained about that then, that it, look, it looks pretty stupid. Uh, well, yeah. So why do it again for F-13? Honestly, um, I know it's more expensive, especially now. But I would recommend the tin set. If you really are a fan, one, it comes with, you know, 13 disc. Like, it comes with more, comes with all of the films, including the remake and Versus, and you have a shit ton more of behind this behind-the-scenes stuff, as well as a Camp Counselor patch, the glasses, the, uh, there's the, the book, there's, a, like, a little book in there. It's, it's very nice, and it comes in the tin set. That's nice. It was only $90 at the time. Uh, now it's pretty rare. Uh, it sells for about $250-ish, but I'm telling you... Either, but <laughs> just I would avoid it. I just don't think it's something we should support. 
as fans that want good stuff. This just this is lazy, man. Like that, we already have this cover. <laughs> like, come on. I don't know. They, yeah, they just copied and pasted. I just, I just, I don't know. It's hard for me to support something like that. But if you are interested still, if you don't have your Blu-ray set and you want the first eight films on Blu-ray, the Ultimate Collection can now be pre-ordered through Amazon for a mere thirty-two dollars. That's not bad. Actually, that's cheaper than I got the DVD set for. But the DVD set came with the hockey mask. So. No, you're a completionist. You gonna get this? No, no, I'm not. Because it's not. I, I. It's one. I'm not supporting it. I, I think that's we're giving them money that they don't deserve for something this lazy. Mm-hmm. Um, that I mean, it's just more Blu-ray movies I already have. Yep. I, I have. I have the peak that is the F13 Blu-ray set. Also, this is called the Ultimate Collection. <laughs> exactly. Why? It, and like. Yeah, that was that was yeah that was my main main thing. Like the Ultimate Collection. It's not very ultimate at all. Just, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just lazy. I don't like it. It's just stupid. But if you if you do want the Blu-ray set, I'm not judging you for that. Um, so enjoy their first Red 8 film. They are great remastered versions. Yes. I will say that. I do like them all because I'm sure you're getting the exact same disc I have. Yeah. I'm just spitballing here. Um, all right, but let's move on to our next topic of the day, which is going to be something else we're not very happy about. Now, Ridley Scott did confirm the next Alien film will not feature Aliens. Okay, let's go into this. You know, last month, director Ridley Scott told the world that the next film, The Alien Saga, was going to get rid of the xenomorphs and aliens altogether in favor of spending more quality time with the universe's AI. Wow. Terminator. Cool. Well, it looks like Scott is sticking to his guns with this one and let EW know in a recent interview that both he and the Alien franchise are done with aliens. All right. Wow. Well, okay, so he had this to say, quote, I think what we have to do is gradually d- drift away from the alien stuff. People say you need more alien, you need more face pulling, need more chest bursting. So I put a lot of thought in Covenant, and it fitted nicely. But I think if you go again, you need to start finding another solution that's more interesting. I think AI is becoming much more dangerous and therefore more interesting. Um, okay, now hear me out, all right? Just throwing this out there to Hollywood Ridley Scott. I mean, yeah, just coming from a normal, a regular guy, average Joe. Yeah. Um, now, if you don't want aliens in your alien film, maybe you should stop fucking making the alien films. Boom, you cash grab asshole. I'm not calling Ridley Scott an asshole because, like, Ridley Scott's amazing, unbelievably talented. But my, the point is, this this just opened up. To obviously he's cash grabbing, right? Yeah. What is the point in making more alien films if you're not going to have the aliens in them? Characters for the cash grab. It it for real is, dude. It's like you have the franchise title and that's all you're working with, but you're actually making a completely different film. That's all it is. That's where Prometheus started, honestly. And now we're just going to escalate that even further. Yeah. So, honestly, for God's sake, just step away. Quit ruining it more than it's already been ruined. Just step away from the franchise and really, Scott, dude, you have an amazing amount of talent. Just go make something. If you want something in AI, go make an AI movie. Goddamn, make another Terminator. That'd be more better than fucking taking away aliens. Seriously, that's like, okay, you know what? Terminator. Let's remove the Terminators. And let's put aliens in. Okay. That's Is that not kind of what he's saying? That, that's like Friday the 13th, but take out Jason. Oh. And put Freddy. I mean, you're that's it's lackluster. It's, it's stupid. I don't like it. No. I just think, I, think, I don't know. I think it's a bad idea. Maybe that's just me. I'm sure there's more context here. Ridley Scott is very talented, very smart. Yes. You think he would uh, be smarter than this? Than to say something like that. All right, uh, could be taken out of context, but I'm just giving my. That is the absolute case. I'm just telling you what I think. All right. Now, question of the day: What do you think of the future of the Alien movies without the aliens? Huh? I'd love to hear your opinions. Please dig deep and bury them. All right, here we go. Next in the news, Halloween casting news. Man, it seems we're getting more and more about Halloween every week. Uh, Of course, we have been bombarded with the fact that Blumhouse has taken over. Jamie Lee Curtis is back as Laurie Strode. John Carpenter is on as executive producer. And Judy Greer is likely to play Laurie Strode's daughter. We also know that director David Gordon Green and his writing partner, David Wright, are ready to create this new new sequel, so-called sequel, to... The Halloween franchise. Now, we do know it's also going to be picking up from the first Halloween and disregarding everything between 2 and Resurrection. Of course, remakes. Fuck them. Um, but we got some new casting news. We've now learned that actress, I may butcher the name, bear with me, Andy Matichek, all right, has been cast in one of the lead roles for the new Halloween film. Now, she's expected to play the granddaughter of Laurie Strode. 
uh, we were talking that maybe Judy Greer looks a little too old uh, to be the daughter of Lori. Yeah. And now we know why. Yeah. Um, because Andy, uh, if you, she's actually she's very uh, mature looking. She looks older. So yes. to, to be the granddaughter of Lori, I mean, it's kind of mix and matching. Yes. Uh, interesting though. What this kind of a you know it questions where we're taking the story. Uh, I'm feeling Scream Fourish. I don't know if I'm the only one that's getting those vibes. I'm feeling very Scream 4, uh, focusing on the original, sort of disregarding sequels, and starting to bring in that new line of younger generation and focusing directly on them. So I imagine Andy's going to play a really, really important role of the granddaughter of Lori in that she will be the one to take on the franchise. Yes. That's what I'm That's what I'm guessing. Uh, not bad news, by any means. I, uh, I mean, I mean, there's not that much news there, even, yeah, to exactly. work with. Uh, the most recent thing we knew before this was the fact uh, a lot of people were talking about is if, um, it's also on slashcast.com is that they're officially confirmed that they're not going to focus on gore that they're going to focus on dread and suspense we already knew that not real big news John Carpenter it's John Carpenter man J- John Carpenter approved the script uh, I think it's going to be okay so that's what you got to keep telling yourself you Halloween fans there that have been nervous about the news you're hearing uh, especially disregarding the sequels even Halloween 2 uh, just keep in mind, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis came back for a reason, and John Carpenter came back for a reason. And I'm, we're praying that those reasons aren't cash grabbing alone. Okay. I I don't think John does not seem like the kind of guy to do that, uh, especially as you see is the way he stepped away from the franchise in the first place when they offered him quite a bit of money. Help just me, saying. John Carpenter. You're our only hope. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. All right. Let's move on to our next topic of the day: Stranger Things three. Now, last week, we mentioned that Stranger Things 3 was officially announced by Netflix. Now the release of Season 1 was uh, was back in July 2016, and we didn't see Season 2 until the end of October of this year. So this had a Halloween theme, of course, so we're expecting something like that for season of Stranger Things 3. Uh, we were hoping maybe we see Season 3 release with a Christmas theme right around December of 2018, but we may have to wait a little bit longer until we see what lies next for the children of Hawkins. David Harbour, who plays Jim Hopper on the series, confirms that we'll be waiting till at least 2019 for the next season. Now, he explained to Variety that the show's creators, the Duffer Brothers, need time to work out the scripts. you got to respect that, ultimately. Right. So he said, quote, I mean, one of the things that's annoying for fans is is that it takes us a long time to do them, do, you know, the, ser- uh, the series. Uh, like, you probably won't get season three until sometime in 2019. But also part of the thing is, like, any good thing, they need time. And those guys work so hard. I mean, they just sit in their apartment and write for 12, 14 hours a day. Uh, so if you haven't seen Beyond Stranger Things, I, I really, really, really do recommend it. First of all, get through Stranger Things 2. God, did you finish? You didn't, did you? No. Okay, finish, and then watch Beyond Stranger Things because it really gives you a look into the Duffer Brothers' lives, lives, and that I think that gives you kind of some perspective about this. Uh, first of all, you had to realize the up in CGI that season two had, and you got to expect another up in season three. You also got to realize the they're not just doing a year later again; uh, they're going to take some time away from season three. It makes sense, okay? Right. You know, all like he said, all good things take time. Um, you know, I think, I mean, what used to be Netflix's uh, golden childs was House of Cards, yeah. which um, for obvious reasons has fallen off, and uh, Orange is the New Black, which has been on a slow decline. Yeah. So I think, and, and obviously now Stranger Things has taken over that role as Netflix's golden boy. So yeah. they're going to, it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, but the thing with uh, Stranger Things is that there is a slight of slight rush to get these out um, because the kids are growing up quickly. Yeah. You can even see that from Stranger Things 1 to Stranger Things 2. Um, and that's only time spent a year. So that's one of the reasons I think uh, season three is going to have a little more gap in between to explain the fact that these kids are yeah. growing up. Uh, also, the the Duffer Bros already confirmed they plan to have a few years in between. So, I mean, it's it's to keep that aging going, right? Um, I also there's also rumors going around that uh, they want to do a um, a Steve and Hopper uh, buddy cop storyline with it. They they both want to. Hmm. So, if you if you go to Stranger Things two, um, are you, you pass? Are you still in episode two? Yes, I'm not. I'm not giving any spoilers to anybody, but uh, there, the Steve is is very, very crucial in, in Stranger Things too. Uh, yeah, even I know that. Yeah, um, and he he's great. So I think the love for Steve that has come from that season is going to be pushed over season three as well. You, you know, I, it, I we'll get a little sidetrack. I think it was funny at the end of season one when um, oh, I'm zoning out on her name. She chose Steve uh-huh. over Jonathan. 
Nancy. Mm-hmm. She chose Steve. Everyone's like, boo, Steve, fucking asshole. Uh-huh. But, and now season two, I mean, a- even after season two, like, just the, the huge, you know, rush of love for Steve. Yeah, um, but it also still has something to do with Nancy, so... Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I know that. Yeah. So, uh, I know that. Yeah. The world of Stranger Things. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Go. Stop right now and just go. If you don't have Netflix, get it. Now's the time. Or find a friend. Find a friend. Phone a friend. Um, with that, let's move on to our next line of news. This is super, super, super exciting for me. Yes. Um, Victor Crowley finally got a release date. And an official poster after what we thought was a completed franchise. Adam Green surprised fans with a secret screening of Victor Crowley at the 10th anniversary for what was supposed to be Hatchet, right? It was supposed to be a 10th anniversary screening. And instead of watching Hatchet, they watched Victor Crowley, which was Hatchet 4. Now, Green then went on tour with the film during a theatrical roadshow, shocking fans around the world. This did keep screenings very limited, however, so fans have been dying to know when the home release will be. Well, hey, we got to see it. Yeah. And it was good. There's actually, I don't know if you can see it. There's a poster, like, right here of it. It was the theatrical run limited edition poster. Um, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, but you know what? The new poster is cool, too. Yeah. Uh, today, Dark Sky officially confirmed that Victor Crowley will be available on DVD, Blu-ray, and VOD on February 6th of 2018. This also came with a new badass poster. Please look at it. Take it in. It's fucking awesome. We, it is It is beautiful. We need one. We need yeah, one no. to go next to the tail and back. I tweeted at Adam Green, um, like, dude, one of these will be available. He didn't reply. I Unfortunately, I tweeted at him during the 48-hour Yorkie uh, charity yeah. event. My bad. Maybe I'll send another one. Yeah. Because now it's buried, dude. He was he was bombarded during the Yorkie yeah. event. Um, but in general, man, Victor Crowley is awesome. Yeah. So um, if you don't know, uh, here's a synopsis of Victor Crowley. In 2007, over 40 people were brutally torn to pieces in Louisiana Honey Island Swamp. Over the past decade, lone survivor Andrew claims the local legend Victor Crowley, who played by Kane Hodder, was responsible for the horrific massacre, uh, have been met with great controversy. But with a twist of fate puts them back at the scene of the tragedy, Crowley is mistakenly resurrected, and Andrew must face the bloodthirsty ghost from his past. Yeah. Like I said, it's it's a lot of fun. It's everything you love in a Hatchet film. Good to go. A review is available. Click the card. Yes. Up there. Um, also, very important with indie film, buy it, don't. Stream it, torrent yeah. it. Yeah, this is yeah, especially with indie film. This film uh, was made very very cheap. The actors were paid like a v- negative two dollars. Very little, ev- uh, very little. Yeah, like, even like you can ask anybody who that was part of that film. It's like, hey, we just love Adam. Adam was going through a tough time. He needed it. We did it. Yeah, and it was as simple as that. Which is why, uh, if you were on the tour, you understand that completely. Oh yeah. Um, if not, I would just Adam might write a book. You know? <laughs> Adam, Adam Green should write a book. Yeah. Of just everything that he said before our screening in Chicago where he was at um, you know yeah so definitely buy it it's it's you're gonna want to see it anyway yeah just just spend a little bit of money support indie film yeah and if you're gonna buy it uh, I do recommend head on over to ariscopictures.com link in the description is available for pre-order on DVD and Blu-ray right now DVD only being $20 Blu-ray only being $25 and those come autographed by Adam Green himself wow so good deal place to go for it I really really do recommend it uh, with that that is going to be a wrap on Slashcast today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget that question of the day. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Editor, roll that outro. Hey you, thanks for watching this episode of Slashcast. If you enjoyed, make sure you drop a like and click that box right down there to check out last week's episode. Also, if you want to check out the film the fans are calling the best fan film of all time, make sure you click that box right down there to check out our Friday the 13th fan film. While you're at it, click that circle right there to subscribe to our channel never miss a video again. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.